good morning um, or afternoon or evening depending on where you are hi I'm Casey Durango with go keto with Casey and this is a little Friday pep talk before we go into the weekend I talk about the ketogenic diet how I have lost 97.4 pounds and I like to talk with other people about how they may be able to lose weight improve their health and regain control of their lives with the ketogenic diet this is a live broadcast if you do not enjoy live broadcasts uh, you may want to move on because I will be interacting with those kind souls who are here and commenting and who are popping in I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces hey guys thank you so much Rosalba Marion Karen from Alaska Wendy Chandra Christy Jennifer my friend Jennifer she says morning squirrel I'm going to tell you if it's okay that I had the most wonderful day with my friend Jen. I actually made a hashtag, hashtag my friend Jen, yesterday. And we visited. And you know, you know you're really lucky when you meet someone and you hit it off and it's as if you've known each other your whole lives and you can talk for six and a half hours. Jen, do you realize we talked for six and a half hours on your porch yesterday? And the time flies. So, he, I'm a lucky person, can I just say. Okay, and actually, actually, Jen uh, shared a story with me that made me thinking, it's kind of the topic for today, and one of the topics, and it is um, how sometimes our feelings are, that are, are, attitude about things I'm switching my thing so lovely mate can escape out the door unrecorded um, you can see the humidity in the door it is so humid here Ugh, and it's been raining um, anyway sometimes you know our feelings follow behavior it's an old trite saying but in my case I believe it to be very true Susan Cosmos thank you for the super chat you are overly generous uh, but you have asked a question so I want to make sure I answer it I will get back to it in just a second I want to complete this thought so if you if you act in a certain way or say certain things even if you're only saying them to yourself your feelings can be impacted by that action or those words or the, that internal dialogue. So I want to talk about that a little bit. My experience with that and my, my thoughts on it. Let me now get to Ms. Cosmos. It says, hey Casey, what's the best time of day to take our supplements? I've always been told after you eat, but sometimes I don't eat until real late in the morning. Now, I assume you mean supplements like vitamin pill or fish oil or something, because you know I'm not all about the supplements. I'm about, I take a couple of vitamins, um, mostly because they I just do and frankly to appease my lovely mate who who wants me to take them but I take a multivitamin fish oil supplement and I do take um, slow release magnesium uh, because you know we can tend to be deficient in magnesium in general and certainly on the ketogenic diet so I take those all three of them with my coffee in the morning you know if, if I think if some people are taking like a fish oil they might you know kind of burp it back up a little bit so and actually I think I think Karen from Alaska is a little grossed out with the idea of fish supplements but anyway I I just take them then but I don't know that there's any reason to, to, to take them earlier or later or midday or spread them out so that would be my, that's my experience uh, Susan thank you so much for the super chat and thank you for asking the question now let's get to this Feelings follow behavior and how my friend Jen, hashtag my friend Jen, shared an experience. She had she at, at some point, just for a temporary thing, she was going with her family to the mall and she'd had a um, medical procedure so she didn't need to be putting weight on her her um, leg. And so they said, oh, let's make it easier, we'll just get a wheelchair. So she's being wheeled around the mall. And she said that after a while, she realized to her amazement she started to feel like an invalid this is just an afternoon not even a full afternoon of being in a wheelchair 
she said, and it was no, you know, like the doctor didn't say, don't, you know, you must be pushed in a wheelchair. It was just going to make it easier that particular day. She said, that was so weird to be sitting there and all of a sudden you start thinking of yourself as, as incapable of locomotion. That's my thing here. Um, you know, she, where she, they stopped at the food court and she wanted to be pushed. Can you push me over there a little bit closer to the table? And then she realized, why am I asking them? Why I just get up and walk over to the table? You know, hop over to the table. And I thought, you know, that is really interesting. Because a few years ago, at um, the suggestion, frankly, of, of one of my kids, I, I, would, I would talk myself down a lot. I would, you know, self-deprecating humor. I would be the first one to make a joke about my appearance, you know, my weight, my lack of height my roundness, um, because I wanted to just say it, get it out there. And, you know, I, I really did spend a lot of time and energy and words putting myself down. Um, and, of course, the ones I expressed out loud were only a fraction of the ones that I was saying to myself in my head. And one of my kids said, yeah, could, you, could you please stop that, Mom? I, it, really, it really is... It's uncomfortable to hear you talk like that about yourself. You know, you wouldn't talk about that like that, uh, uh, that way about anyone else. Why are you doing it to yourself? Why are you, why are you saying that? And, you know, it took, a, it took some repeated efforts at that. And I thought, well, oh, okay, I can, if it's making my kids uncomfortable, I'll stop. I'll try to stop. So I did. And what happened was it didn't, stop me from thinking the thoughts right away but I did stop myself from verbalizing them and a funny thing happened a funny thing happened on the way to improved mental health I found that if I quit saying the negative things to some degree I, I stopped thinking them as much now this was all during the time of when I first started um, you know uh, I, you know, we don't change our lives generally because of one thing. I mean, we can have traumatic or inspirational moments that change our lives on a dime. But as a rule, when we change our lives, it is because of a cumulative set of circumstances that maybe take decades to, to pile up. I was in a point of my life where you know, the kids are out of the house, they're all fully cooked human beings, they're off the payroll, they're managing their, themselves beautifully. And um, so the dynamic in the house had changed. I had more time to myself to think. But I, I also was not particularly healthy physically and not particularly happy with myself. Very happy with my life, not happy with myself. So I was trying to come up with stuff and this is how I came along the, you know, Google how to not take insulin for diabetes, which is how I found Dr. Westman's white coat video, which is how I, the whole thing started. Along with that, I was trying to not feel so cruddy about myself. I just didn't want to spend the next 30 years feeling this way, either physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. I didn't want to live, I didn't want to feel this way. So I tried to actually just feel better about myself. I was, you know, you've heard me say at some point I decided I had to choose happiness. I had to just say every day, today I'm going to choose joy. Today I'm going to choose to be happy because I'm tired of wallowing in unhappiness. Again, my life is great. I was unhappy with myself and I was tired of that. I had enough. Um... So uh, along with all these things, and you know, mom, please quit talking about yourself that way. You know, quit saying these things out loud. And so I quit saying them out loud. So I quit thinking them as much and I decided to choose. It was like, a, it was, it, I changed the, I righted the course of the ship. And you know, turned the, turned the big ship around and I started feeling better. I started feeling better about myself. I started feeling like I was more capable of stuff. I started waking up with a sunnier attitude. And then you combine that with, the ketogenic eating, which, I mean, it was just the, it was the perfect combination of things at the right time for me. So all of this is by way of saying, if, if hashtag my friend Jen 
can sit in a wheelchair in a mall and she's in it for an hour and a half and starts to feel all of a sudden her brain starts to feel like an invalid. Think about how when we treat ourselves or tell ourselves that we can't do something and we do it over a course of years, is it any surprise that we can't do something? So I want to challenge you guys for this weekend. For those of you who struggle with, and you know, because this is a, supposed to be a video about the ketogenic diet, those of you who struggle or have friends who struggle with saying, well, it's, you know, good for you and everything, but I can't do that because I can't give up chocolate, chips, potatoes, pasta, Coca-Cola, gummy bears, whatever it might be. If you tell yourself that you can't, you probably can't. But why would you tell yourself you can't do something? Would you let your children get away with that? Would you let your best friend get away with that? If your kid comes and says, well, no, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to make a B because I, I know I can't make a B. I know I can't study 15 extra minutes a day. Would you let your kid get away with that? If your best friend says, um, you know, I, I, if your best friend says, I can't do what you're doing because I can't resist cake. Well, you know, I would, I would recommend not responding. Well, you can, you just won't because that's negative. Suggest to that friend, and maybe that friend is yourself. Well, try, try telling yourself that you can do it and see what happens. Flip the script. If you're, if you say, I would never be able to jog a quarter of a mile, you'll probably never jog a quarter of a mile. Not that you need to, but if you, if you would like to be a person who would jog, and you say, well, I never could do that. I couldn't jog a quarter of a mile. You probably won't jog a quarter of a mile. Um, so I'm going to challenge you. Feelings very often follow behavior. And in this case, the behavior is the self-talk. It's telling yourself what you can't do. And I've been there, man. I posted a picture of some tortilla chips on Instagram. And it's we were out with, with our son and, and uh, daughter-in-law, and they were treated us to lunch. FYI, it's a great thing when your kids pick up the tab. We love that. Um, but my son eats chips, and he's perfectly fine, so the chips were on the table. When we go out to Mexican, we just you know, say no thank you to the chips. But I thought, look at those chips. Those chips were the very things that I told myself for years why I couldn't do low carb. I knew low carb worked for me. It worked when I was in college, guys, 1977, my junior year, no, sophomore year of college. I knew it worked. But I told myself, and, and then it worked again in like 2004, you know, not to the extent that I am now. And then I you know, fell off the wagon, and then I said, well, I just can't do it. I can't do it because I can't give up tortilla chips. And then as I was looking at them, the table, I took the little snapshot because I thought, those things, that little basket of nothing, that little basket of fried processed stuff that came out of a bag was ruling me telling that basket was telling me that I couldn't do it no I was telling me I couldn't do it and then when I decided to tell myself I could do it things changed so here's your challenge again if you're struggling just try just write it down you know affirmations I don't know whether you go in for those I don't do them but why why not try write down on a little notepad, 20 times. I can resist cake. I can resist cake. I can resist cake, or whatever your drug of choice is. I can give up bagels. Try it. The worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna waste the time, you, you know, you, you will have spent the time that it takes to write something down 20 minutes or repeating it to yourself. Okay, lecture over. I want to move on to a couple of other topics. Uh, Marie Nershel, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Marie, um, underneath my post on the Facebook, Go Keto with Casey Facebook page, she's, she asked a question to the, 
to um, essentially, can you talk about what do you do if you're not hungry and you're eating like one meal a day and is that, is, is, is under eating going to hurt weight loss? No, Marie, if you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. I know it's scary and it can be weird to get used to the idea, wait a minute, I'm, I ate today, my meal was two slices of bacon and three pieces of broccoli and some cheese and that's, and I don't want to eat anything else, it's okay. Because tomorrow, frankly, or the next day, you might eat more. We need to get rid of the idea that our energy needs, and notice I'm trying to avoid, and I don't want to call it the C word, because that really has bad connotations, but I try to avoid the, the word that talks about how many you should eat every day according to my fitness pal, calories. Try to stop thinking in terms of calories. Try to start thinking in terms of energy needs. Listen to your body. How much energy do you need today? Some days more, some days less. Yesterday morning, my husband, as he does every morning, he has my coffee ready for me, and he eats breakfast every single day. And he always, he say, hey babe, you gonna eat breakfast this morning? I'll say, nope, thank you. Or sometimes I'll say, ah, a couple pieces of bacon. Or I'll say, yes, can we please have huevos con alineos with the cheese like you do? Sure. How he gets and he does the huevos con alineos. One of my most popular videos I ever made was the just picture of him making the, the huevos con alineos, which is just eggs with scallions and tomatoes and, and extra love. Mm -hmm. So I had a big breakfast yesterday. Then I went and visited, spent the day with hashtag my friend Jen. And it was great. Um, but think about your energy needs. If you're not hungry, don't eat. You're not going to fall over. You're not going to go into starvation mode. Okay. I'll say it again. Saying you're going to go into starvation mode is an insult to people who are really and truly starving in the world. And there are people with no access to food. We are not starving, folks. If we skip a meal, we're not going to go into starvation mode. Our metabolism is not going to ratchet down. Metabolisms slow down anyway by nature of the aging process, and they slow down if we lose weight. If we're carrying, if I'm carrying around 97.4 fewer pounds than I was, think of all the energy I'm not spending. Go out and find 97 pounds of something, guys. Just put it in a wheelbarrow. Forget about having it on your badunk a dunk and your tummy. Just push it in a wheelbarrow. You're going to spend more energy pushing that wheelbarrow than if you're not pushing a wheelbarrow full of 97.4 pounds. You're not going to ruin your metabolism. You don't have to get in extra fat. You don't have to get in a certain number of calories. Listen to your body. If you're not hungry, don't eat. How do you do the ketogenic diet? Guys, can we all say it together? Consume 20 or fewer grams of carbohydrate a day, total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry and stop when you're satiated. That's it. Jennifer Costa. She writes, I now take flights without feeling the need for snacks. Life changing. And, and Miss Thing here, my friend, uh, hashtag my friend Jen, flies a lot for her business. Yeah, you stop thinking, oh my God, I'm going to pass out in Newark's airport if I don't have something. Piff! Piffle! Got to fall over? You know, make sure your electrolytes stay up. Make sure you get enough sodium so you're not having a sinking spell. But that's not from lack of food. Usually it's from lack of sodium and magnesium and potassium and all those other ums. Okay, Kala, Jennifer, you fly without food? What a concept. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that is great. Okay, um, I do want to get in a thank you to my patrons. Many of you are here, and the reason I do that is because my patrons are super awesome. They help make it possible for me to carve out time to do these live events. Um, they are the super most awesome. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Okay, now I am. I think that was that was really kind of um, what I, just what I wanted to cover. So, if anyone has any 
questions or if they want to share some stories, um, challenges. Is anyone having anything they're particularly finding difficult today? Um, okay, Ka uh, Cassie Johan. Hi, Casey. First time here. You're my inspiration. Only counting my carbs now. It's almost freeing. Thank you so much. It is freeing. It truly is. I never, I never trapped or paid attention to the M word. M A C R O S. Never paid attention. Because you know why? Dr. Westman never said pay attention to it. He said, keep your carbs below 20. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry. So that's all I did. And it is so straightforward. Now, you guys can also, you guys can also repeat with me. Just because this way of eating is simple does not mean it's easy. It was easy for me because I was ready at that point. Don't know whether it was alignment of the planets. I don't know whether there was just something about Dr. Westman, the way he del lost, hold, hold please, microphone drooping, hold please. His delivery, his boyish good looks. Um, there was just something about the way he delivered that message that I said, okay, that makes really good sense to me. I'm going to do what he just said. And I, that, that next food I put in my mouth, I simply didn't put any carbs in. Frankly, I didn't even, I got anywhere close to 20 grams a day. I was essentially zero carb. And I will go for days sometimes without eating any vegetables. It's not because I shun them. It's not because I fear them. I just don't feel like it sometimes. The days I feel like eating vegetables, I eat vegetables. But that's where my carbs come, and I count them. Um, so like last night, what was uh, dinner? It was uh, leftovers of some sautéed Italian sausages cooked up in some cabbage and, and some bell pepper. And But it was a small portion. I didn't have many vegetables. But um, I was very close to zero carbs. I was eating eggs and bacon and ribeyes and sour cream and cheese easy didn't think about didn't think about measuring anything else at some point you do need to start tweaking because you have to start listening to your energy needs at the beginning particularly if you have a lot to lose as did i you can be like you should pardon the expression a kid in a candy store you can eat all the stuff you've been told for decades that you can't eat all the deliciousness all the food all the wonderful delicious food the butter, the cream cheese, the sour cream, the bacon, the eggs, the omelets, the roast beast, the chicken with the skin, the ribeye. You can eat all those things. And so you're like, woohoo, I'm doing this crustless pizza. I just took shredded cheese, put it on a sill pad with some pepperonis and Parmesan cheese and red pepper flakes sprinkled on top and I'd pop it into the broiler for 90 seconds and I would just eat that right off the soap pad. And then I lost weight. Well, at some point I needed less energy. I had my energy needs were different. I'd lost about 40 pounds. So I had to start thinking about, oh, you know what? Dr. Westman asked me when I questioned him, why am I in ketosis not losing? Are you only eating when you're hungry? No, sir, I cannot tell you honestly under oath that I am only eating when I'm hungry. He said, try that. So I did the next day. The scale started moving again. So let's look back. Pamela, hello, darling. Um, I Pamela Ramsar from California. Beautiful message today on Facebook. I did not get a chance to respond, but thank you so much, you dear woman. She wrote me a lovely, a lovely one-on-one -on -one message. Okay, M M Melissa Gish, help. Had some rip eye the other night on your oh 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 recommendation. Let me see if I can get back up there. Excuse me, I'm gonna try to get back to it. Help, had some rip eye the other night on your recommendation, made me gag. I can't eat meat, chicken, okay, and bacon now. Any suggestions for meat replacements to still get healthy fats? Um, you don't have to eat meat, you don't have to eat beef, and, and I'm sorry, <laughs> I mean, if you don't like beef, don't eat it because some talking head tells you to. 
Don't tell, don't eat what other people tell you to eat. Eat chicken every day. Eat fish. If you like bacon, eat bacon. Um, you don't have to eat beef. Don't eat anything that makes you gag, for goodness sake. Eggs are nearly a perfect food. Um, so when you can eat them in a variety of ways. I like fatty pork chops. I like halibut. Don't love salmon so much. Um, I can take it in limited quantities. Um, um, chicken, chicken thighs with crispy skins. Ooh, baby, 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 so good. If you like a hamburger, that's you know that's still beef. But there are lots of ways to get in fat. And the thing is, you're not trying to add fat. Just whatever you're eating, have the fat that comes with it. If you're concentrating most on fish, which is less fatty, um, yeah, have some avocado. Um, have some butter. Have some bacon. Wrap your scallops in bacon. That's a delicious meal. Ooh, maybe we'll have that. No, we're having liver tonight for dinner. <clears throat> Um, I find you can eat lean and add your fats. Whatever works for you. Just, you know, if you're not, if you're not, um, if you're in ketosis and you're not losing weight, the first thing I ask people because of recent questionable recommendations that have been given by questionable sources on the interwebs, I ask, are you eating, overeating dietary fat? Are you pounding back MCT oil, butter? you know, bulletproof coffee, um, fat bombs. If you're not overeating dietary fat, cool. Just, you know, don't fear fat, don't load up on fat, just get fatty sources of protein. If, if your protein sources are more lean, yeah, add a little bit of fat, but you don't need a whole lot. Bacon wrap sirloin, right? Right? Um, Casey, uh, Casey Hillary. Why do they might be my next step? They never bothered me before, but I, and I'm not sure what the question is being, being answered. Um, okay, fish from the dock in the front yard, eat immediately. Pike, trout, barbet? I've never heard of barbet. Um, okay, uh, Shanna Scalf, my new motto, today, not tomorrow, TNT. Okay, I'm not sure what that's in response to, but maybe that's in starting. I'm going to start today, not tomorrow. Yeah, don't wait for Monday. Um, do what you want to do. But why wait for Monday? I get a lot of people write me say, I'm starting this Monday. Start today. Why not? You don't have to do anything extra. You just don't eat carbs. So, you know, don't wait until after the wedding. Don't wait until after so-and-so's birthday. Don't wait until after your anniversary because there's always one of those every single freaking week sometimes multiple times a week there are things like that there's always something between work family extended family holidays there's always something there's always a stressor don't wait i saw the white coat video the next thing i put in my mouth just didn't have carbs it was the it was January eighth. I don't even know what day of the week it was, and I know that I saw that video probably midday because I probably sent spent the morning crying because I didn't want to take insulin for type two diabetes, which I was on the verge of. One of my brothers had just been diagnosed. I got off the phone with him. I knew I was next. Start now. There's no upside in waiting. Okay. Uh, Rhonda Baldwin, Hillary, egg fast works for me too. Uh, I haven't done one of those, so I can't speak to that. Shapey nails, but you don't need, but don't you need beef for iron? My doc told me I was low and eat it. Well, beef is an excellent source of iron, but you know what the best source of iron is? Is liver, beef liver. But you can get iron in dark leafy greens. So I, I, people here can explain that better. Uh, as a matter of fact, Dr. Westman says when you take a multivitamin, which he does recommend, make sure it does not have added vitamin, uh, excuse me, added iron, unless you have a condition. Because this way of eating is very high in iron. As a rule, it's very nutrient dense. I do get a lot of messages, you, you know, you're making yourself sick, you should be eating more vegetables, you must have your greens. Nope, nope. And there is a particular, particular internet personality 
so-called doctor, who I think says you must have seven cups of greens a day. Nope. Nope. Is liver a fatty meat? I'm going to say it is, but maybe someone can look it up. Um, if, if Jean O'Connor is here, she has all those facts at her fingertips. Um, cooking cast iron skillets, exactly. Do Dr. Adam Nally on the low carb cruise, which my lovely mate and I, I were on and loved. Um, he said that's a great way to get iron. And in response to a question, he said, cook and cast iron skillets. And if you've seen any of my so called cooking videos, I'm not a cook. Um, we cook in cast iron, we cook on cast iron. Uh, mostly because it's indestructible, and I've inherited a lot of it from my mother, and, and I'm cheap. Oh, Barbet is a small catfish. Thank you for clarifying that. Luis Diaz, good morning, Casey, from hot Southern California. You guys on the West Coast, so sorry. Hi, Sonny. I missed you. Um... Yeah, West Coast. I know even Seattle, San Francisco, Portland, I think, is pretty warm. It's actually very moderate here, uh, which is weird. We're in summer. We're in, you know, the south, not the deep south, but we're in the south, and it's usually so hot. No, not today. Uh, Manuel Era, no, liver doesn't have much fat, but it's very healthy. You can always add the fat. Thank you, Manuel. Yeah, cook it in bacon fat, which is what we do. Uh, I'll be doing that today. But it is so nutrient dense. Zoe Harkum, who is a wonderful lecturer, if you get a chance to hear her, has said if you find a more nutrient dense source of food, please share it with her because she doesn't think there is one. Diane P. Hello from Illinois. Oh, Rhonda, SoCal is hot. Flooded in Michigan, says Cassie Johan. Um, Melissa Gish, I would not have made it four weeks now with Casey. Hmm. I'm not sure. It was, I hope that was a compliment, but it sounded like you. Anyway, uh, hey, Christine, non-chewing keto food suggestions that aren't eggs. Oh, because of, hmm. Uh, yeah. Take some cream, maybe some cream cheese, heat it up a little bit, throw in some broccoli. Put it in a blender. Make yourself some cheesy, creamy, cream of broccoli soup. Try that. Um, Non-chewing. Anybody else have any? Of course, mashed cauliflower, but I have to be careful with that. Hey, Diane, thank you for the $2 super chat. Thank you so much. Um, oh, and Sandra Cantney writes, it's gray and dreary in Northern Ireland. The world. Um, Ellie Hauser, hey honey, uh, wish I liked liver. You know what? My taste buds have changed. I didn't used to. I do like it now. And you know what? I may be losing my taste for wine. Or I might be losing my taste for cheap wine. Maybe I'm getting refined. Um, enjoyed the wine I had yesterday with hashtag my friend Jen. But, you know, sometimes when I buy wine from my house, it's in the big old, uh, you know, big, big fat bottles. And it's just like, oh. So um, I'm really tired. To, my taste buds are changing. Has anyone else had that experience? Um, Shanna Scalp, thank you so much. $5 super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you'd ask a question. Um, Shaping Nails, Casey, you know whom you're talking about, LOL. That's crazy when I heard them say seven cups. Yes, I bet you do know who you're talking about. Guess what? You don't have to take a pill to get cruciferous vegetables. Don't take a pill. Eat some cruciferous vegetables. If you don't know what those are, they are broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. Good, very good for you, veggies. Eat some. It's easy. Guacamole, non-chewing. Excellent tip, Indigo Mom. Guacamole. Cheesy crab dip. Excellent to take some tuna, some canned salmon. You know, just put it in your food processor with some mayonnaise, mash it all up till it's just, you know, almost soupy. Great. Lots of, <laughs> lots of things to do. 
I'm Melissa Gish. Sorry, that was a compliment. I meant I wouldn't have made it without you. You're very kind. Yes, you would have. You know what? You did this because you did this, because it was right for you to do it. If, if I make you feel like, you know, I, I felt awesome. Thank you. But absolutely, anybody that does this is doing it. They're doing the work themselves. Of course, it's not really work. People say, oh, my God, you lost so much weight. That, you must be so proud of yourself. That must have been the hardest thing in the world. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. No lie. Now, that does not to, mean to tell you that if you're struggling, that you're doing something wrong. Oh, it was easy for Casey. No. I was at that right moment. Remember, I had tried this since 1977 several times with limited success. I mean, I had some success, and I would screw it up. It was the right time for me. I don't want anyone to feel the way I felt on January 8th, sitting right here where I'm sitting right now. I don't want anyone to feel that way because that was a bad place to be. But whatever, whatever you do, give yourself a break, okay? If it's slow loss, it's slow loss, it's loss. Don't comp compare it to me because I was a slow loser. So you'll feel so good about yourself. I was such a slow loser. I did see someone asked if my shoe size change. Yeah, big time. Um, big time. My shoe size changed. I should run upstairs right now, grab my uniform shoes that they were. I didn't wear a uniform, but all I could really fit in, all I bought were these Dansko knockoffs clogs because my foot was so wide, I couldn't get Danskos. So I had these knockoffs. And so I wore those all the time. And then compare them to like something I wore on the cruise, some red peak toe platform patent leather pumps. I should run upstairs and get those two sets of shoes and, and show you, but I don't want to have daddy. Um, start with pork. Okay. Uh, Gak B Gak says start with pork rinds, only two or three and see if you swell up from the whole bag. <laughs> First, because you will blimp. Yeah, be careful. You know, just because foods are allowed does not mean they're unlimited. If you're very large and you're just starting, yeah, don't worry about portions. At some point, you do need to. And frankly, it's self-regulating. If you do this, you start burning fat for fuel. The food you're eating is very satiating, very satisfying. It actually suppresses appetite. You will find that you are naturally eating less. Okay? Because that's the way it works. If you are finding that your appetite is not suppressed, you may not be restricting carbs sufficiently. Because if you're hungry, you want you want to look. You really want to look at, and it's looking at the carbs. It's not looking at the fat. It's not looking at the grams of protein. Keep your carbs low enough so that you transition from burning uh, glucose for fuel to burning fat for fuel. Rosalba Trujillo, me. Yes, I. I was never a shoe person, and I've become one. <laughs> and I love Zappos. I um, I get my stuff from Zappos usually. Okay, Calla, so talk about stopping when satiated. Yeah, thanks. I always said that the hardest part for me was eating only when hungry. I got that part. Now I'm needing to work on stopping when satiated. And that might mean leaving, as silly as it sounds, two forkfuls of food on a plate. I'm just saying, no, I, I don't need to eat this. I don't want to eat this. I'm satiated. We are all part of the Clean Plate Club. We're all part of the it's sinful to waste food. We're all part of the, I'm just going to have the rest of this. I stopped. I asked my husband if he wants it, and now sometimes he says, now my husband, mind you, can eat vast quantities. Um, he doesn't eat as much as he used to, but he certainly could eat much more than, than I, as far as, as that goes. Um, but he'll say, no, I'm, I'm full. I'm done. I'm satiated. Not even full. I still want anymore. That is a real trick. Um, so. Yeah, practice that. Ask yourself. Eat slowly. <laughs> eat slowly. Karen from Alaska, you even stop with ribeye? Yeah, I do. 
And let me tell you what I do with ribeye. I start at the fatty end and I work my way across. So usually about a third of the way through because I've eaten a lot of fat with that because I love it. Um, I'm usually done. And, you know, it's great for lunch the next day or dinner the next night or slice it up and throw it on a salad if you want. Or my husband eats it for lunch the next day or I throw it into an omelet. Food's not going to go to waste. It's going to get eaten. Or it's going to go to the dogs. You know what? Better have it go to waste than go to waste. No one's winning if you're eating food you don't need to eat. You're not saving it from the planet. Give it to your dog. Give it to the chickens. Save it for tomorrow. Okay, um, okay. Uh, Christine Hirschfeld, waste food. Oop, that's why we have dogs. They're never full. Thank you, Christine. Absolutely. Okay, okay, Cortana. No one's talking to you. I. It. This only happens when I am on with you guys. That that these artificial intelligence devices all over my house. They start talking to me. Between Alexa and Cortana and Siri. It's talking to them. I'm talking to you. Uh, great idea. Well, okay, I sprinkle a little on my script of dishes from Ramin Mar. You're definitely losing interest, even if the scale is stuck. I'm so proud of you. Um, I first had my first pork belly. My husband loves pork belly. And we cook it in, in a few different ways. And we get it at Costco and he portions it. We buy, uh, like, we'll buy a full ribeye. And my husband portions it because he used to be a meat cutter. And so we have it with extra fat. He He trims them with more fat on them. So we have extra fatty ribeyes. Um, Canadian beauty, I often just throw it in the garbage. There you go. Um, okay, you guys. Yeah, <laughs> Cortana wants in on the action, says Denise, loves IT, loves it. All right, I am going to start winding this down, trying to keep these a little bit shorter. Um, Hey, Lori Fisher, got to fly. I have a meeting with the nutrition consulting client. Yay, Lori, that's great. That's great. Um, okay, Tammy Smith, I get in fights with Siri all the time for butting into my conversations. I know, right? Cherry Cherry, hi, Casey. Just got back from the doctors. My cholesterol level has gone down. Was high when I first started, but so pleased it's going down and still on keto. It's almost guaranteed to do so. And maybe your doctor, maybe he's already a proponent. But if he's not, maybe he'll start to see this in more and more clients, uh, customer, patients. Um, Melissa Gish, is unsweetened coconut bad? Look at labels. I can't tell you. Do total carbs, not net. Ignore the sugars. Look at total carbs. And I can't tell you. I don't, we don't eat unsweetened coconut, so I don't know. Um, Marie Nershell, thank you. I, I hope you were on earlier when I did your question. Um, don't worry about not eating too much. Eating eating very little is not going to hurt your weight loss. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If that means you're eating one meal a day, fine. If it means you're eating a snack a day, fine. If it means you're eating three meals a day, fine. Eat when you're actually hungry. Stop when you're satiated. Um, Ms. Tara Michelle, haven't binge since January. Recently fell into a three-day cheat. I pulled myself out. And then the rest of the comment, I went too quickly. So I'm glad you pulled yourself out. Very good. Um, Denise loves, is it IT or it? I'm not sure which. Going to family barbecue on Saturday. Any tips? Yes. Um, if it's a barbecue, like in, 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 in the South, we call a barbecue a different thing. You know, in certain areas, like, you know, North Carolina, there's, Barbecue, and then in Texas, there's barbecue, and then there's Eastern and Western barbecue in North Carolina. But some people mean a barbecue just means you have the grill going, you throw, you know, chops or bratwurst or hamburgers or hot dogs on. If you're going to a barbecue where it's like pulled pork, um, yeah, just eat the pulled pork. If it's a vinegar based sauce, awesome, enjoy. Just try to make sure there's no sugar in it. Just avoid the bread, the chips, the potato salad. If it's a barbecue like hamburgers and hot dogs and brats, that's what you're going to eat. You're going to eat everything everyone else is eating except the buns and the potatoes. You might make people jealous. You know, you might have three slices of cheese, two hot dogs, a giant hamburger, and mayonnaise, and a glass of wine. 
And other people are like, wow, how are you going to eat all that? And say, I'm going to eat it with extreme gusto. That's how I'm going to eat it. Keto for life. Yes. Uh, Beppa, would you, where are you from, Beppa? And I hope I'm pronouncing your first name right. There's no way I can pronounce your last name. Thank you for joining in, by the way. Hey, Jenny. Haven't, uh, haven't talked with you in a while. So glad you're here. Um, Shanna Scalf, wish I had known about keto 20 years ago. You know, a lot of us struggle with that. I've decided to be okay with having been fat for 29 years. The way I look at it, generally, in my life anyway, and I'm very blessed, and I recognize that, things have worked out the way they're supposed to. So I look at it that I needed to be fat for 29 years so that on January 8th, 2014, I could change my life. And it's been life changing, not just a little bit. It's been life changing. It's changed everything about my life. And from, as for my, you know, from inside my head to what I do for a living, trying to do for a living, to my relationships with other people. Some have been enhanced, some sadly, um, some not. Some have fallen by the wayside. But I needed to be fat for 29 years so that I could be talking to you right now. Not that, not that, you know, this is the culmination of world history, me talking to you, but because you're talking to people because if my experience can help one sat inside her, her or his head, overweight, borderline diabetic, borderline high blood pressure, borderline high risk, well, high risk for cardiovascular disease, not wanting to live this, that way for another 30 years, if I can help one person, that's why I was that for 29 years. And I'm okay with that because things turn out the way they're supposed to. That's how I feel about it anyway. Um, okay, I'm gonna start winding down. Thank you to you, you wonderful people. Thank you to my super chat people. That stuns me whenever it happens and it, it really helps. Um, thank you for my patrons. Thank you for showing up this morning. Um, and I will be in, I, I have, um, I have been pushing the live sessions back so a little bit more, a few more people can join. Tomorrow morning, January, January, help me, June 24th, Facebook Live at 11 a.m. Eastern. Monday, I plan on being back here on YouTube, 1 p.m., so that's June the 26th. Um, I will try to keep up the live events. Uh, I, I am, I am trying to keep them up and I'm trying to become more productive and more efficient in my use of time. Thank you guys. You're totally awesome. Have a great day. Keep your carbs below 20. Eat fatty sources of protein. Eat only when you're hungry. And if that means you're not eating much, so be it. Stop when you're satiated. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to other people. If someone says, I, I can't do what you're doing. Don't tell them you can, you just won't. Try framing it. Well, maybe you, maybe right now is not the time, but maybe tomorrow you'll feel like you can. Or maybe you can and you just don't know it yet. Give it a try. Tell that to yourself. Maybe you can and you just don't know it yet. I didn't know it until I did it. I didn't know I could totally lay off tortilla chips until I did it. And now I know that I absolutely could have the whole time, but I can do it now. So be kind to yourselves, be sweet, and I will talk to you later.